Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the food experience. Today's experience, meatloaf. And I'm baking it in the Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven. I have the grill version, any of the versions will work. In fact, any countertop oven or your regular oven will work with this. And without further ado, there's quite a lot of preparations. Let's get it going. You will need half of an onion. And I also just got these knives by Pioneer Woman. Time to put them to the test. Wow. Cuts through it like nothing. I also recently bought this Mueller chopper dicer set and putting it to the test for the first time. I have the small dicing blade installed. Hopefully this works out. Well, mostly worked out. Left a little bit behind. Well, I got the onion out of there. It was a little bit tricky, I will say. Well, if you first don't succeed, try, try again. Here we go. Here's another piece. Okay, that time I did a fast downward press, applying more pressure, and it did seem to fare better. There's still a few pieces stuck, but not like it was. Let's try it again. Yeah, that's the way to do it, folks. You have to be pretty aggressive and um, smaller pieces. Yeah. Definitely working a lot better. There's a couple pieces, but not like what it was. Here's a look at what it diced. Seems to have diced it pretty well. A couple larger pieces, but most of it's diced. It definitely did an okay job, but I think they need to be diced a little more. So I'll try it by hand. That's definitely a lot better now. Adding the onions to a bowl that I'm going to mix everything in. Next up was minced garlic. I minced up three cloves of garlic and put it in the bowl. You need two cups of panko breadcrumbs. Into the bowl they go. Two large eggs. Scramble them beforehand. I like to do it this way. However, you could do it whatever way you prefer. Add them to the bowl. Half cup of vitamin D milk. Add that to the bowl. A tablespoon of kosher salt. Teaspoon of black pepper. Tablespoon of brown sugar. Tablespoon of mustard powder. Two tablespoons of ketchup. And two pounds of Angus ground beef. This is Angus sirloin I'm using. Next, go ahead and mix everything together. Try to break apart the meat a little bit even though it'll all be put back together, but you want everything to be kind of loose. You don't want it to be really compacted. And just get in there and mix everything together so it is well combined. You want to put the meat into the pan and kind of press down to make sure it's even all the way through and through. Next over to the max, waking it up, start, stop, oven mode, leaving it on bake, setting the time a lot higher than I really need. Move over to the temperature, setting that at 350, start her up. Next, refrigerate this for 15 minutes. Next, grab a small bowl and it's time to make the glaze. Going in with a third cup of ketchup, tablespoon of brown sugar, two teaspoons of mustard powder, two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, and whisk it all together until everything is well combined and smooth. Next, take the bake pan or whatever other pan you're going to use and line it with aluminum foil. 
since we're going to be baking this and not air frying it, it's perfectly fine. Just don't use foil when you're air frying. Next, grab the meatloaf. And pop it out, just like that, removing the plastic wrap as well. You may want to shape it a little bit. Insert it into the bake to position. Close her up. Setting the time at 15 minutes. After that, we're going to remove and glaze it. Time's up. Time to remove. Starting it back up in oven mode, leave it on bake, setting the time quite a bit higher than I need. Hour and 20 should do it. And temperature back at 350 and start her up. Meanwhile, based on the ketchup glaze, Make sure to coat it generously. Get the sides. And that glaze will cook into the meat. When it's near done completion, I'll remove it again and give it a final glaze. I'm also inserting a temperature probe right in the middle, straight across, and that should hit around the middle of the loaf. Back into the max it goes into bake two. Close it back up. When it reaches about 120, I'll remove it and glaze it some more. It's at 140 degrees. I said I was gonna do it at 120, folks, but I changed my mind and would let it go to 140. I see one place where it's cracking right here. I probably could have formed it a bit tighter, but that's okay. Just baste more of that sauce right in there. And a little more on top. Oh, and at the same time while I'm doing this, I'm changing the temperature up to 400 and let it go. And what I hope to achieve by this is that the ketchup will kind of caramelize on there, which it's not really doing yet. The hotter temperature should definitely help. And I think that's looking pretty golden. Time to put it back in the max. Letting it cook until the internal temperature reaches 160. Time's up. Internal temperature is 160 degrees. That's exactly when you want to remove it. Removing it from the max sure does smell good. You want to let it cool down for at least 10 minutes before trying to slice into it. It's been resting about 10 minutes and wow, it smells really good. Time to try to remove it from the pan. See if I slide this aside and maybe lift it by the corners. There we go. Remove the probe. Looks like it might be a little bit stuck to the foil. Wait, there we go. Time to cut into it. There's a better look at it. It's looking really good. Time to cut a slice. Uh, the inside is still 167. I think it has a reddish hue, possibly from the amount of ketchup I used. There's the first slice. Definitely held its shape well to the plate. I'm going for an end piece. Definitely nice and tender, but it still has this like pink going through it. And I really do believe it's the ketchup. See if I could cut a thinner slice. Can't always do that with meatloaf. 
All right, let's go back up and we'll sample this together. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. There's the meatloaf that I just made. Um, I'm still concerned about the red color, but I think it's from all the ketchup seeping into it. Hmm. Garlicky. Onions. The glaze is good. Yeah, it's definitely done for sure. It's not too tough and it doesn't just crumble apart. You know, in the description down below, I will list the website where I found this recipe. I'm still looking to make it again though. I need to perfect it. This is close to what I'm looking for, but just a hair off. A lot of experimentation went into this video. There might be a few bloopers that follow at the end. And by the way, I, I made meatloaf tonight by request of my dad. He's the one who wanted it. I'm going to try to get him in on a video soon. Uh, but for now, he said it's good. He's enjoying it. And um, it's not bad. It's definitely um, very ketchupy, I will say. But yeah, a lot of garlic and onions. I'm pretty sure this would make pretty much a heck of a good sandwich, you know? So I think that's about it for right now. I hope you guys enjoyed me experimenting with meatloaf in the Caloric Max air fryer oven. It was a success. I mean, it's just a little bit off than what I wanted, but it's still a success. It is good, and I'm sure it'll all be eaten. So, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, drop me a line down below. I love hearing from you guys. And until next time, have a stellar day. Be excellent. And most of all, remember me, I'm KJ Andio, your food experience host with the most. Y'all take care, and I'll see you next time. One of the... One of the... Ah, crap. <laughs> You'll need... Oh, crap, I don't even know. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. There's... Ah, I totally messed up.